Bigfoot is kind of the gold standard and, and Dogman probably deserves to be up there except he's not as famous. I think probably one of the most well-known examples of strange creatures, and specifically a dogman, is Anubis from the Egyptians. We're talking five, 6,000 BC, seven, 8,000 year old tablets and things like that. And one of their gods was Anubis, god of the underworld. And he was a human for the most part, but had the head of a dog or the head of a jackal more specifically. And that's one of the most well-known creatures. And that kind of goes throughout all history here into modern times where now we have people today talking about seeing these upright walking dogs anywhere from within the woods to coming up to their homes to crossing the road to appearing in their homes. They tend to be very menacing and that is something that seems to have been a very common uh, storyline with these things throughout history. Regarding Dog Man, he's an interesting little set of tales. Um, you know, he's certainly not as popular as the Loch Ness Monster or Sasquatch, but he certainly is fairly well known by folks in the know. Uh, I've seen it reported that there's been more sightings of Dog Man than there have been of Sasquatch. If they're in your presence, they demand your attention. And that even goes back to the ancient Egyptians where it was a god and it demanded the attention. So there's definitely something here that uh, stems back to a very long time ago. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there throughout history who have had experiences with this creature, if you want to just call it a creature, but they have not talked about it. And I think as the century turned the last 20 years with the advancement of technology. I think humanity has gotten to a point where people are more open to discuss these kind of topics because they read other people's experiences on the internet far more than they could have before. And so the scope, the, the perspective has grown a lot because of the access to information, which has allowed people to feel more comfortable coming forward and talking about this stuff. And I think that's why we're having a lot more uh, reports today than we would have maybe 20, 30 years ago. In Dogman Encounters, people who have experienced these things all across the United States, they get a feeling of immense dread, of immense evil. And you, you think about our, our relationship that human beings have with wolves. Wolves are always the bad guy, and their interpretations of the Bible of wolves, always beware of the wolves. And wolves in real life, if you meet them, they're very shy creatures and avoid humans, you know? I mean, there are reports of them attacking people, but it's very, very rare, not like bears, you know? You know, bears are much more aggressive towards people than wolves, but wolves get don't go out at night or the big bad wolf stalks this woods. Um, you hear about the Native American encounters where they have nothing nice to say about a dog man, where I think it's interesting where a lot of Native American tribes, and even to this day, if you talk to them, where they say, oh, Bigfoot, you know, we leave them alone they leave us alone. Some of them have benign descriptions of Bigfoot. Some of them have aggressive depictions of Bigfoot. A lot of them do. Some of them have even a benevolent depiction of Bigfoot. Oh, they bring us food and fish when we're, you know, starving or something like that. The Bigfoot are good here. They never have anything nice to say about Dogman. They say that they exist. Uh, some of them, you know, if you look into the Skinwalker type stuff, especially in the Navajo tribe and some of the Southern tribes, of, of, the, of, of the United States. There's people who talk about when they see a dog man, not just fear, but the sense of evil comes over them. The only time that I've ever heard of something more in the positive sense is with children. I talked to a woman who had uh, ongoing interactions with the creature and it was not terrifying at all for her, but she was a child. Recently, I talked to a man that his friend told him as children that they, he wanted to take him to meet his friend out in the woods. So they went out in the woods. They came across an old shack like out there in the middle of nowhere. And his friend goes up on the porch, looks in the window. And he says, oh, good. He's home. 
and he said that there was a bunch of like chewed up like toys on the uh, front porch and he goes up and looks in the window and he sees an upright standing walking dog inside this house and it was like the dog's house and he obviously freaks out runs away and stuff but the point is that kid that took him there believed that that was his friend and so there is this little bit of a pattern that i'm starting to see where people are having very positive interactions with these things but it's always in my in my case and what with what i'm seeing it has always been with them as a child and the whole legend behind dog man is very interesting first of all you know we see sasquatch or yeti or bigfoot or Swamp Ape, or whatever you want to call it, showing up literally all over the world. But no one claims it. Dogman, for whatever reason, is regionalized. He's often referred to as Michigan's Dogman. Sometimes you hear about Ohio's Dogman or Minnesota's Dogman. You even have the Beast of Bray Road, which I think is in Wisconsin, which seems to be a Dogman entity. And so I've, despite appearing in, I think it's 48 out of 50 states in the United States and on six of the seven continents worldwide, Antarctica being the only exception, um, you know, it's most commonly known as the Michigan Dog Man. The first sighting was there uh, back in 1887 by some lumberjacks who described this, you know, large, seven foot tall, muscular, dog man type creature, you know, literally a cross between a dog and a man that chased them out of the woods. I, I think that kind of leads credence to some of the missing 411 cases out there, missing people across the United States go missing under strange circumstances. And sometimes they find paw prints or something, a combination of teeth and paws, but also things that look like it has articulation in hands, almost like if a bear or a mountain lion had human like hands. That doesn't sound like a Bigfoot, you know, I mean, they can be ferocious, but nothing like a, like a bloodthirsty predator. What we see with Bigfoot a lot of times is the only reported attacks are in an effort to get away from humans. It's usually, you know, a, a male Bigfoot or a female, if it's with young, will start throwing, you know, large rocks or huge tree trunks at people. and making these warning noises and it's it's again it's more of an effort of leave us alone go away whereas with dog man it seems to actively pursue humans as prey uh, if you accept those stories and some people have even claimed to have been assaulted by dog man and gotten away there's some missing persons or people that have been found dead that the cause of death is attacked by a pack of feral dogs in locations where you wouldn't expect to find feral dogs, like up in the Rocky Mountains. And so some people believe that's evidence of a dogman sighting. Typically, dogman is described as a canine head, at least, uh, hence the dog-like features, usually. Uh, but there are different reports as to how it looks physically. Uh, some people will describe it as very much a dog-looking creature that is standing on two legs. People have reported seeing it on four legs, then standing up. Uh, but then there's also people who will talk about seeing this dog creature that had the hands of a human, but had like the nails came out like a claw. Uh, maybe the legs looked more human-like, or some people would describe Bigfoot-like uh, in the sense that it was humanoid, but the upper body was like a barreled chest like a dog would have, and the head of a, a dog and I think just on a surface level, seeing a Bigfoot upright walking, a lot of people mistake him for humans. That's why a lot of people don't shoot Bigfoot, even if they have a gun on them, is they afraid they're going to shoot a human. Homicide, hominid, you know? But when you see an upright walking dog, there's nothing in a fossil record to support an upright walking dog. It's a freak. It's a monster. Not to mention all the werewolf movies that were popular 10, 15 years ago. It's in our psyche. And I think going back to the whole wolf thing, it's something almost like a genetic memory. I think that's one of the reasons why Bigfoot is scary because there's kind of a genetic memory of maybe as a hominid species when we weren't, we were smarter, but we weren't necessarily the biggest and toughest. You know, Dogman's kind of also unique in that it's not a solitary creature. 
a lot of the reports discuss seeing a dog man coming after them, but there's been plenty of reports too that they will hunt in small groups, uh, four or five at a time. There's been claims as many as 20 hunt together. So it seems to be a bit more social of a creature. Yeah, I believe that they do travel in packs. Not always, though. I do think that they are solo creatures, but I have heard stories of them running in packs and specifically a story uh, a friend pointed off to me. He interviewed a guy where basically what happened is it wasn't even an interview. This guy was telling him that he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's lying about the people that come on his show to talk about dog man. So he basically sent the guy out to an area where he knew the guy would have an interaction with Dogman. It was in Kentucky. He had a friend of his meet this guy, and this guy took this man down into the woods as far as he was willing to go. He's like, this is as far as I go. Go down this way and, you know, hang a left, and down in that ravine, you, you'll have an encounter kind of thing. And what the guy did wrong was... The man who was telling him the instructions from that point to how to carry this whole thing out said that you take your truck down the road to this point and then you get out. Well, he didn't do that. They just they just went. And what they encountered was multiple dogmen chasing them out of like a, it was some kind of like holler. And um, they they that's why he said, take the truck down this point, because you're going to need it closer but uh, they actually made it to the truck. They got out, but they reported having multiple dogmen chasing them. So uh, to, the, to me, that tells me that they do run in a pack. Uh, but I don't think always because most often I've heard people report these things as seeing a dogman, not many dogmen. Uh, if there are people out there that are seeing many dogmen, maybe the reason why we don't hear about it is because they're not surviving the situation. I think when you talk about werewolves and dogman and strange upright walking canine creatures people see, is there something to the demonic witchcraft with somebody transfiguration changing into a werewolf? Oh, maybe it depends on how far you're a believer in that kind of stuff. I think that's going to be a lot harder to prove. Dogman actually is the origin of those legends. I think that pop culture, I think society, as far as your uh, subconscious goes collectively, at least on some level, pulls from some piece of truth and reality. Now, a lot of people want to say that dog man and werewolves are kind of the same creature, bore out of the same fairy tales. And that's, that's fine. They, they very well could be right. Um, you know, I, I, the one thing I find interesting is werewolves have been in literature to some degree going back to the Epic of Gilgamesh, which I think was 2100 BC, yet the first reported sighting of Dogman is in 1887. Um, so you've got thousands of years, literally, where you've got werewolf stories, but you don't have dogmen stories. There's no reports of men changing into beasts outside of the Skinwalker lore. I think that these creatures have been around for a very long time. And I think that in that time, we've tried to mimic things as humans. And you can go down the occultic road and you can go down uh, what that entails. But there have been people who have claimed to go through occultic rituals to transform their bodies into being a werewolf. And so... When they say werewolf, I take them for at their word in the traditional sense of a werewolf, where a werewolf is transforming from a human to a, a, a dog man creature and then back. There are people who are, you know, deep into the occult that say they can do rituals that will turn them into that. Now, the rituals will vary from person to person as they describe it. So some people will talk about how they go through a long drawn out process that's very painful to become a werewolf. And then there's other people who will talk about more in the moment ritualistic things that like they'll wear the, the, the skin of a wolf and they'll do rituals to transform into a werewolf. And uh, there's a whole line of thinking with that where some people believe that when somebody comes across a dog man, maybe they aren't seeing what is actually there, but they're coming under the spell of the person doing the occultic ritual. I think as the society has kind of accepted that 
werewolves, the whole idea of a man changing involuntarily into this, you know, paranormal creature of the night um, probably does not exist. But there's a lot of people out there that because they've had this creature in their lives since childhood, because they grow up on the property that their grandparents grew up on, and it's just been in the family for years, and these creatures have been on the property for years, for decades, that they view it as just a normal creature that they have to deal with. And that is the very exact situation that some people dealt with in Kentucky that I've actually talked with. He believes that it's just a normal creature out there in the woods somewhere. Now, for me, when you say dogman, about 80% of the reports, the classic thing that comes to my mind is your werewolf looking creature, um, upright walking canine with a narrow waist, but shoulders and dogs when they stand up don't have shoulders. This creature that stalks the woods of North America and Europe and seen in South America and in Mexico too. They have their, they have their traditions of the dogman all across the border. You kind of don't see them very much in Canada or Alaska. I think there's bigger, badder things that maybe keep them in check. Or they like cold because Minnesota gets cold. The uh, Beast of Bray Road, Michigan gets cold. Wisconsin gets cold. But you don't hear about them necessarily in Canada or Alaska. The best evidence for me to receive, like if, I, if I'm if i looking for reasons to believe in Dogman, uh, for me on a personal level, I am looking for people who have seen it and are able to describe it to me. And so... I like the idea of people coming forward and sharing their stories as to what they saw in detail, what they went through. I think those are probably the best evidences in the sense that you get a sense of what that person went through at that moment. And uh, whether you want to believe that they saw what they think they saw uh, is irrelevant to the fact that you talk to some of these people and you're like, they definitely went through something. I may not believe what they think they saw is re is reality and real, but they definitely feel like they went through something. Dogman, again, it's not as popular as Bigfoot and some others, so you don't see as much writings, sightings, literature about it. But from what I've seen, you know, some people claim there's up to seven different types of dogman. The two most common are known as type one and type three. Type one is literally the oversized ginormous dog, you know, that chases people through the woods and in, into the night. Type three dogmen, I think are more akin to kind of Bigfoot, but with a dog's head on it, you know, a very big, muscular, broad-shouldered body. They are seen all over the United States. I, I don't hear a lot of, not saying they're not there, when I say they're not in a place, it's just I haven't heard a report. If someone told me of a report, I would not be shocked. But the Pacific Northwest, kind of maybe Idaho, west of Idaho, kind of northern California, like north of California, the Pacific Northwest, most of Canada, Alaska, I haven't heard very many reports of dogmen at all, an upright walking canine creature at all. Plenty of Bigfoot in those areas. Maybe there's so many Bigfoot they displace you know, certain predators will displace other predators and they, they stay away from each other. But the southern parts of the United States, pretty much Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, all the way through Texas, all the way through the southwest of New Mexico, Utah, Nevada, Southern California, even going on up as far as like Fresno and through the Sierra Nevadas. I think that they're kind of all over and I view Dogman very much in the same light as Bigfoot in that sense because just this morning, I had somebody reach out to me on Instagram asking if Dogman is in Arizona. And though I didn't have any specific cases in my folders or anything like that of Dogman being in Arizona, I've heard of Bigfoot being in Arizona. And I told the person, if Bigfoot has been sighted in Arizona numerous times, I don't see why Dogman couldn't be in Arizona as well. I think some of the biggest misconceptions about Dogman are that it's a solitary creature that hunts at night when there's been plenty of reported stories again it, it seems to be a pack animal um, and there's lots of reported sightings of this creature during daylight hours uh, i can think of one in australia where a couple was on honeymoon and and saw one walking in the brush 
like it was looking for something, had its back to them, and it was a good ways away. But uh, it was, you know, around lunchtime, sunny day, no, no clouds in the sky. So it was fine being out hunting during the day. You hear a lot of reports, a lot of reports in the desert, a lot of reports even by the border and very hot, very dry climates where supporting a large creature doesn't necessarily make sense, which maybe lends to their more paranormal side. But a lot of people report them there. There's lots of stories of the border patrol of um, immigrants running to them, running from the Los Lobos that runs on two feet, you know, crazy stories. And in fact, in Western Kentucky, uh, I've been talking to a guy recently who's had a lot of activity and he has Bigfoot on his property. He sees them going around his property and sneaking around and doing stuff. And he catches them out of the windows, you know, peeking through the blinds, he catches them. And then they go away for a week and nothing really happens. And a few weeks later, these dogman creatures show up on his property and they kind of don't want to seem to be there at the same time. Like they avoid each other the same way mountain lions and bears avoid each other and black bears and grizzly bears avoid each other. And, you know, they're not going to want to start a fight unless they have to. Uh, which is an interesting topic all in itself. There are encounters of them fighting each other, which is really, which is really, really cool in a very dark kind of a way. And in, in South America, there's lots of reports. You go on YouTube and find some supposed videos. I cannot confirm or deny their authenticity. But there are some scary videos of rural villages of these things stalking around and that kind of stuff. There's um, not as much evidence regarding Dogman as there is for, you know, the Loch Ness Monster or, or Sasquatch or whatnot. And I don't know what the reason for that is other than maybe, it, it's very easy, I think, to get some of the Dogman sightings confused with Bigfoot sightings, so they may be lumped into that group. W there's also been a lot of hoaxes. There was a famous uh, set of film known as the Gable film it was shot, I think, in the late 70s or early 80s on eight millimeter film of a family kind of playing out in the snow, chopping wood, playing with the dogs and all that when this dog man shows up. And I think it was back in 2007, the, the man that shot the, Mr. Gable, who shot the tape, finally confessed that it was a hoax. The dog man entity, it is hard to see in that film, but it does look unusual. And, he even went on one of the History Channel programs to show that it was his buddy in this kind of enormously over-constructed ghillie suit. Um, so there's there's lots of room for pranks within, well, really any cryptozoological reporting. I think it really, it's a lot like Bigfoot where if you want crystal clear photographic evidence. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to provide that for you. But it's much like Bigfoot. Um, there are a lot of good organizations doing great research where they found very strange tracks um, out there. If you go on the internet and look, you can find them. I've used them on my YouTube channel and stuff like that. Very like dog, like they look like a, a dog track, like a dog or a wolf track, but they're kind of extended, which would make sense if something was upright. And they're huge, way beyond any domestic dog could go. I think that there could be a cover up with Dogman, just like in the sense of other cryptids. I don't think that every morning the president of the United States wakes up and says, I need the latest report on Dogman today. Where are they at? Who have they bothered? Do we need to send in reinforcements? I don't think that happens, but I do believe that there is some kind of black budget operation involved here where there's money funding projects, groups, uh, offices of some kind that does handle this kind of stuff. And I do think that there is a certain level of scientific experiment for governments to create their own chimeras. We have seen governments in the past trying to do such things. And so I don't think that just because we know it happened in the past, it means that it's stopped now. I think maybe they just get better at hiding these things. So there's the aspect of a cover-up because maybe they're dabbling in it but there's also the the cover-up as in the aspect of maybe they don't want that information out for whatever reason uh i can i, I can just imagine what it would be like if they came out and said that dog man's real don't go into the woods you know uh, i think it could be something that would be very uh sensitive bigfoot is generally like a giant generally flat-footed version of a human foot 
And Bigfoot can't really have arches because they're so big, they would crush them. So Bigfoot's the big, flat, almost kind of rectangular foot, where this is a very, you know, um, cats like mountain lions and tigers, they have semi-retractable claws. So when they leave a print, they don't leave claw prints. But dogs do, wolves do. These dogmen appear to leave these kind of elongated dog prints and you can see claw marks digging into the snow or dirt or wherever the median that it's left. Uh, the other thing too is hair samples are out there. People have collected strange hair samples in the past. Uh, people have also come across strange kills. Um, deer that seem to be killed by a creature that doesn't exist in that portion of the woods or is unknown um, or animals that were eviscerated and killed but buzzards aren't going near even the bugs aren't even eating very strange stuff like there's like they're marked or something and people finding carcasses of various animals in the woods or on a property with no blood but it's dead like it was killed somewhere else and people describing to me like it was an ambush like they're coming oh what's going on with this weird dead animal and they feel like they're being watched or they hear something moving in the bushes and it's almost like well they didn't want the deer they wanted me for whatever reason i mean you think they'd rather eat the deer which gives them a more scary paranormal thing that they they're interested in people i do know that one of the most compelling pieces of evidence i've seen is known as the on star recording it's where a man and woman are driving down a road at night and they use the OnStar service, which was one of those emergency in-car buttons where that would dial authorities for you. And they reported that they drove off the road because a large something ran into the middle of the road and you know the husband swerved to miss it and they ended up in a ditch. They weren't hurt and they tried to describe to authorities what it was. Was it a deer? Was it a bear? And he said, well, Honestly, it looked like a really, really big wolf walking on its hind legs. And in the course of reporting this and giving this description, you hear a very strange noise, the husband and wife scream, a giant crashing sound or smashing sound, and then nothing. It goes blank. From that point on, it's the OnStar representative basically saying, sir, sir, are you there? Um, so that one's very unusual, uh, and it's hard to explain away. I'm not sure traditional science even wants to acknowledge the topic of Dogman. Uh, I think maybe traditional history could acknowledge the topic of Dogman, as I stated earlier, with the ancient Egyptians. And you can look at the historical context of these creatures being in what you would call folklore, uh, not real true stories. But as far as science goes, I don't think science wants to even touch it. I don't even think science wants to uh, acknowledge the fact that Dogman is a possibility. Uh, I, I think Dogman is a far more extreme topic to consider for science than even Bigfoot is. And we know that Bigfoot is something that they don't want to touch. Uh, but there have been scientists that that do go into the topic of Bigfoot. I don't know off the top of my head very many scientists that have dabbled seriously in the dogman community looking at the facts of dogman but some of the stuff like in kentucky where they don't they have very sporadic mountain lion type kills and stuff like that and very sporadic sightings of mountain lions they don't have giant bears um, and that mountain lions tend to go for the throat and some of these creatures have no neck damage the the, the one that um i was shown pictures of um i did a whole report on it actually had the deer skull two puncture marks right in front right above the eyes and one of the puncture marks went clean through the skull into the brain and its guts and insides were completely eviscerated and torn out something took its spinal column out of the inside of the carcass and broke it in half it looked like it had hands but there was no blood on the scene so some creature big enough to fit a whole deer head into its mouth because the puncture holes were pretty even above the eyes so it wasn't bitten sideways onto the head. It was bitten like the whole thing went into its mouth or it came up behind it and had jaw pressure and fangs long enough to puncture its skull. And then almost when it was eviscerated, looked like it had hands. You know, yeah, could it have been a natural creature? Sure. 
but it definitely seemed very odd and the puncture marks in the head are very odd when most normal like cats and bears go for throats wolves go for throats coyotes nip at the heels and let them bleed out in the back you know there's very specific hunting tactics that can be applied to the known north american species and to see something like that it's like well this is a hunting tactic we don't see out of our typical north american species especially in certain areas that don't have them reportedly i know that there's been lots of reports of people driving at night seeing it people walking in the woods um, regardless of location reporting it but there's very rarely any physical evidence that I'm aware of uh, you see Bigfoot hunters you know do plaster molds of the footprints they find and I'm not aware of that occurring with dogman sightings there's also um, you know the scientific community doesn't really discount the possibility of a creature like this existing but they believe it would be more of a prehistoric type animal somewhere between what we think of as a modern day wolf and a, a dire wolf. Um, maybe a, you know, that's larger than normal um, that people get confused by, but they don't speak to how it's, you know, virtually every encounter, the dog man's on his hind legs walking as a human would scientific community doesn't offer an explanation for that this idea of how does dog man survive i think there's a very real nature to it step aside from any kind of paranormal topic of conversation when it comes to dog man because as soon as you start talking about dog man being a paranormal interdimensional type creature really the idea of needing to survive off physical things kind of goes out the window in my mind but I did interview a guy on my show. It was episode 335, Dog vs. Dog Man. I had Kyle on the show, and he told me a story from when he was 15 years old. He is from Kentucky, and him and his grandfather used to hunt the Daniel Boone National Forest for raccoons. And they went out, and his grandfather could not go out in the woods with him because he just physically couldn't do it anymore. So they would drive the truck into the woods, his grandfather would park the truck, they'd get on a two-way radio, and his grandfather would stay in the truck. So Kyle lets the dogs loose, they get on a scent, and they take off, and they wind up treeing a raccoon. Kyle, as he's trying to keep up with his dogs, now they're gone. Like, you're just listening to the barks, and you're kind of following the barks to keep up with your dogs. He hears a pack of coyotes coming in as well when they tree this raccoon. And so his grandfather gets on the two-way radio and says, do you hear the coyotes? Get to the dogs before the coyotes do, because if you don't, there's going to be a fight. And so Kyle said, okay, and he's booking it through the woods. He's trying to get there in time. He doesn't get there in time, and a fight breaks out. Now, what you need to know about the dogs that Kyle had, he had two dogs. One's name was Bo. The other name was Jake. Bo was the younger dog learning how to hunt from Jake, the older dog. And I guess that's how they train their hunting dogs. Their hunting dogs are trained by the older dogs. Jake was a legendary dog in the area. Everybody knew Jake because Jake was known to be the best hunting dog. He was the biggest dog, the strongest dog, the best dog for hunting. He was the best. And so Jake's out there treeing the raccoon, kind of showing Bo how to do this as well. When these coyotes come in, Bo takes off. And, and uh, Kyle heard Bo take off. He could tell Bo left and left Jake to fight the coyotes alone. But Kyle said that, in this first round, the coyotes came in one by one, and Jake fought them off. It wasn't very hard. You could hear the coyotes go away, and then they came back in as a group. And when they came back in as a group, Kyle said that you could tell and hear that Jake was getting his butt handed to him. The fight turned, Jake was losing, and he's trying to get there as fast as he can. But then he hears another dog come in and join the fight, and all of a sudden... The coyotes are, you know, running away, crying and screaming and stuff. And Jake goes back to treeing the raccoon. And Kyle arrives on the scene. He sees Jake treeing the raccoon. He comes over, pats him on the head. And he hears what he thought was his other dog, Bo, that came in for the fight on the other side of the tree, chomping down on a coyote. So he walks around this tree to see and greet his dog. And what he sees is not his dog, Bo, at all. What was there was a huge dog. He said this dog was so big that it was holding a coyote by the rib cage in its mouth. 
like the whole rib cage was in the dog man's mouth. He's terrified. And when he lays eyes on this thing, this thing locks eyes with him. And it stands up on hind legs and takes off after Kyle. Kyle runs. And as he's running, his dog Jake comes in after this dog man. And this dog man kind of just pushes it away, just pushes it off the side like it's nothing. And there's Kyle's still running. The dog man's still coming. His dog Jake comes back in a second time. And the dog man takes Jake and just throws him through the woods. And he said you could hear Jake crashing through the trees. And he believed Jake was probably dead at that moment. And so he, I think he said that he fell. And he winds up on his backside. And this dog man is coming in on him. And it's right there on top of him. Uh, he said that it was so close to him that he could see down the back of its throat. He, in that moment, in that those split seconds, is thinking, I'm dead. This monster's going to kill me. It's over. And for the third time, his dog Jake comes running in, broadsides this dog man, and they get in a fight. He gets up and starts running away, calling for his dog, but all he hears is this dog man shredding his dog to pieces, like literally destroying his dog. And so he's filled with tears, crying, running for his life out of the woods. He's fired. I, I believe he fired off around in, into the sky when he hit like an opening, calling for his, dig, for his dog Jake. Jake doesn't come. And he gets back in the truck, tells his grandfather to take off. And so they take off. And he tells his grandfather what happened. His grandfather told him that if you're going to spend time in these woods, you need to understand there are things out here that you're not going to understand. His grandfather knew these creatures were out there. And the next day they come back looking for Jake. They can't find him, but his grandfather leaves a coat out there for the scent in case Jake survived or Bo comes back. They go back out that evening and they see a dog alongside of the road and they get out thinking it was Bo. And it turns out it was Jake. Jake actually survived the attack. His ears were shredded like noodles, he said. I mean, he, his dog was in really bad shape. But uh, his grandfather, his grandmother actually nursed the dog back to health. And Jake actually lived to be an old dog and went out hunting again. He said Jake was never the same uh, hunting dog again. But he did go out hunting and doing what he loved to do. I say that story to kind of draw this picture of a very natural, real environment. And in that environment of hunting where a dog is treeing a raccoon, wanting to kill the raccoon, the raccoon is food. Then there's coyotes coming in on the dog because the coyotes view the dog as food and they think that they can all gang up on the dog and kill it. Why would they kill a dog? To eat it, right? But that doesn't happen because this dog man came in during that fight and wound up going after the coyotes and killing one and eating it, right? There's something about the, the coyotes that brought in that dog man. Maybe it was the howling. We're not sure. But one thing's for sure is it wasn't coming in to save Jake. It was coming in because it heard food. And so I think there's a very real natural survival tactic here where it's just hunt, eat, survive. And so if these creatures are physically real, not paranormal in any nature, just physical creatures out there existing, then I think that their survival tactics is simply hunt, kill, eat, survive. It's a lot of strange phenomena, but I think the biggest bulk of information, much like Sasquatch, is through eyewitness encounters. I've talked to people who are trembling with tears in their eyes as they told me their encounters, some of them from 40, 50 years ago. Dogman has only kind of recently been in the vernacular on YouTube, on the interwebs, that kind of stuff in the last 10, 15 years, 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. Maybe you heard of the Michigan dog man or the beast of Bray road, but those are very localized reports. Right now, by and large, we have nothing but reported incidents from individuals or small groups to go by, which it's hard to buy into a creature really existing but for again it's probably the most reported cryptid in the world now how people in michigan and in the western united states the southern united states canada england australia singapore are all describing the same creature more or less that one's beyond me i can't explain it uh, so it does lend some probability that there's something going on here. 
you have people who claim to have seen Dogman hunting coyotes and killing them and eating them, very physical. Well, you also have people claiming to have seen Dogman do supernatural things. So, some of the things that we have heard on my show, and you can say that that's not that it's not a Dogman, or maybe it is, but we've heard on my show people talk about how they're in their home and these creatures appear in their home not there's no broken door you didn't hear it come in all of a sudden you open your eyes and it's standing there in your bedroom watching you sleep these creatures are known for that kind of activity so there's a real paranormal angle there how does it get there how does it get in is it just sneaking in through a window and we can't figure that out or is it appearing uh, you could, one could argue that somehow it got in the house and, you know, it's standing in the middle of living in the middle of your room, uh, just watching you sleep maybe, but then we have people who are involved in witchcraft. So I have a friend, uh, and he tells this story where he was interviewing a woman for, I believe a book that he was writing and she was a witch and she was talking about the school of mystery that she was learning how to be a witch in. So apparently there's schools of mystery out there. So it's not just in Harry Potter. There's actually schools out there that teach witchcraft and people how to do sorcery. And she was attending one of these schools. And she said that in one of the classes, she was learning how to open portals. And when they opened up a portal, what she saw come through was an upright walking dog. And so... Where are these things really coming from? We have other people talk about their experiences with Dogman and how at one point in time they thought it was a very physical creature, but then as they got more information about that encounter because they had it with multiple people, other people saw things that wasn't what they saw in that moment, leading that person to believe that there was a paranormal angle to this. Uh, there's this theory that's going around where people believe that maybe these are interdimensional creatures and the longer they're in this dimension the more physical they become that might explain some of the things that people claim to have seen or that we've seen ourselves such as the video that i talked about earlier with the man on facebook where in that video people saw it live happen where this thing ran by the camera and it looked transparent you could see it but there was parts of it that looked transparent, like it was almost metaphysical. And so this idea of metaphysical dogman does circulate around. And I do think that there is a there is some teeth to those arguments as well. And uh, the more you collect stories, the more you start drawing this picture of this creature being physical, but not always physical. So does that mean that there are two different creatures? Does it mean that it controls if it's physical or not? Or are there different types of these creatures? They're the same creature, but just different types, and they have different abilities. Those are questions that remain to be answered. But the fact is, there are a lot of people out there claiming to have seen Dogman do very paranormal things. And uh, I think those people need to be given credit and uh, paid attention to just as much as anybody else who say that they just saw a Dogman walking across the road and it seemed very physical. In the Bigfoot world, if you see one out in the woods or one crosses the road or something like that, no one's going to have a problem with you sharing your story. No one's going to question you or come to your house or make vile, idle threats or hack into your computer. But if you have, much like with Bigfoot, if you have footage of them, good photographs, DNA evidence, trail camera footage, repeatable hard evidence, there seems to be some organization, government or otherwise, who knows, that wants to keep the existence of these things under wraps. And going off on kind of a tangent of the government cover-up, there is a disproportionately large sightings of these things around military bases, especially DUMS, deep underground military bases, where there's mountainsides and areas, think NORAD, you know, acknowledged or not, Area 51, where there's military bases that are maybe not on the map, but are marked military, or there's one or two buildings above ground, but there's a whole complex and there's a lot of reports of the woods around these deep underground military bases and known military bases. It's almost like they're a guardian or that they were let loose or that they were set out there or what business they have um, that the military knows about them. 
and there's even um, some insiders that have come forward saying that, yeah, they have tracking collars. Some of them are a natural creature that's been around for thousands of years and other ones are genetically modified and they have a tie to the government. You know, the government knows about Bigfoot and they track them. And they also know about these creatures and they track them too. Again, it's not a critter that seems to garner a lot of attention compared to more of the popular cryptids. Going into these situations, whether it's going into an experience or going into wanting to think about these, these things, you carry a worldview and that worldview is going to shape how you think and view these topics and your experiences. So I wouldn't say that the public is missing or hitting on anything about Dogman, but I would say that it is very much determining on how you see things going into the topic as to how you'll see the topic and perceive certain things within it. So that obviously arises a lot of arguing back and forth amongst the culture and the communities. You know, some people believe that Dogman's very physical, it's just a hairy monster that wants to eat you. And then other people believe that it is interdimensional and that it's not gonna hurt you, it just wants to scare the hell out of you. Uh, I personally believe that both can be true. I very much straddle the fence on this willingly and openly. I don't know what Dogman is to say that very definitively, here's the answer. I just know that I've talked to a lot of people out there who have had varying experiences that leaves me questioning, what is this? Leaves me saying, this might have multiple explanations and leaves me in a position where I have to expand my thought process and how I view things to be able to encompass the complexity of the topic. Is it real? There's so many reports of it, it's hard to say that it's not real, but there's so much lack of evidence, it's hard to buy into it. So I, I guess I would be on the skeptical side of it being real. I would not be shocked to find out it's, it's a true entity. Um, I'm pretty open-minded about these things. I mean, even in the neck of the woods I live in, there's reports of people being confronted by this creature. Um, but I guess until I see some more hardcore physical evidence, I'm going to stay on the side that if I had to lay money down would say it, it's probably not real. Cryptids are fun. They make the world a little bit more interesting place. So bring it on if he's out there. I'd love to see evidence of it.